hand digging a Christmas tree. And we don't really dig a lot of Christmas trees out, but we do dig many of them every year. And the reason why people like to have us dig Christmas trees for them is that they can plant a tree after Christmas. So the tree is not cut and then they don't feel like they wasted a tree. So the first thing we do when we dig a tree is that we have to remove all the branches out, out of the ground and we do that by tying string onto the tree and then wrap, wrapping it up. Whenever you wrap up a tree, we always stress that you should try to tie the main part of the string, the first beginning part, onto the trunk of the tree and not onto the branch. The reason you want to do it onto the trunk is that when you tie up the branches and then the string is tied to a, a branch, that branch will gain a memory of being twisted around the tree. So we tie it to the center of the tree to avoid making memories on branches. And you'll definitely notice that when you get back to your house, that if there's a memory on a branch, the branch just won't look right. After we tie it up, we grab a handy dandy shovel and we start removing the grass around the tree. There's two reasons to, to remove the grass. First one is that the top little bit, there's not a lot of roots there, it's just extra dirt. So we just want to remove that so when we dig the tree out, there's a lot less weight. Secondly, we do that is that we remove a lot of, like we put a little taper onto the, the tree. The soil is tapered away from the center of the tree. It'll aid us when we start digging or trenching out the rest, second part of it. So we just go around removing the dirt. If we see any like little shrubs or any grass clumps, we usually get rid of that fairly well. After we remove the grass, we grab the king spade. This is the main digging shovel and we start trenching around the tree. It may seem like a lot of work and a lot of people do like to shortcut it, but the reason we like to trench around the tree is so that when we eventually pop the tree out of the ground using the shovel, you're not prying against the side of the tree ball, you're prying from the bottom up. And the reason that's important is that if you pry from the side, the soil tends to crumble and break. When you pry from the bottom, the ball usually comes out in one piece. If the ball breaks, then a lot of the roots and the small root hairs break off of the tree and it makes it much less viable of a plant once you try to plant it in the ground. Everybody does the digging a little bit different. And I, when I was little, I was taught uh, many different ways of doing it from different crews that we'd hired to go in hand dig trees. The one way I like to do it is I like the one day that we had a bunch of Irish guys come in, they were hand digging trees for my dad, and they taught me this style. But everywhere you go and everybody you talk to has a little bit different style of digging trees. So I always call this the Irish man's digging style because that's who I learned it from. When we dig out the tree, we always start a little bit bigger of a ball than what you need. Then you work taking extra soil around until you get to the right size tree ball. Once it's about the right size tree ball, we start making another taper, making the tree ball from where the top of the ball is down to where the base is, a little bit of taper going inward. And that helps keep the ball a little bit more together as well. I like to do that too is that also when we dig it out of the ground and we wrap it, the, wrap, the string that we put on it usually holds a little bit better, it makes it a little bit tighter. When we have people go dig trees with machines, they always have a taper to it as well, so it makes it more uniform when you go to the nursery and buy the tree out. Every now and then you'll find a root that sticks out that's just a little bit bigger than you want to cut with the shovel. Do try to use pruners to cut those so you make a nice clean cut with it. If you have a real sharp shovel, you can go through it, but too big of a, a root, you never get a really nice cut on it. So do have some sort of ways of pruning large roots so that you don't make major injuries that don't heal over time. So as we get closer to getting the tree ball to the final form, um, we do a little bit of tiny little cuts downward and we make a nice little groove down the, the base for as deep as we're going to trench out. The reason for that is, is that we like to use the shovel to try to dig underneath the tree ball and the better the angle you get on it and the more uniform the angle you get on it going around the tree you get a nicer rounder look better looking bottom and that makes it easier for when you tie the string onto the tree now it was really cold out this day i think it was like 20 degrees and the shovel I had was sitting outside, so it was freezing, so my hands got a little bit cold, so I got to warm up my hands a little bit. But after I warm up my hands, I start with the initial 
digging underneath the tree and this is the only time where I like to really use the sh my feet to push pressure down on it. One key thing that I learned is that when you dig the tree out and you're digging down you don't like to pry on your first initial digging with your feet because if you pry then the, the, ball starts, the ball starts to break apart a little bit. So after you, you go all the way around it, then you can pry it and break it out of the ground. We grab a little piece of burlap. It was really cold that day. Even the burlap was frozen together, so it took some time to get that spread out. And I made a little mistake here, and you'll see I'll correct it. I am right-handed, so when I go pick up the tree, I want to have the burlap on the other side of the tree so that I can use my right hand to pick up with most of the weight. If this was a little bit bigger than when we like to dig by hand, and I usually like to try to use the shovel, but I couldn't get my hand underneath of it to pick up the other side of the shovel, so I had to pick it up by hand without using the shovel. And that's not as nice, but it still held together pretty well. You can see our real heavy clay. You can see our subsoil there at the, at the lower end. There's no roots down there, so sometimes they do break off a little bit. But that's not too big of a deal. In our area, every area you dig a tree out of, the root systems are a little bit different. And that has to do with how much air, how deep the roots can go to get air, if it's too wet down there. But we're in Pennsylvania and we have a fairly heavy clay. So a lot of our roots are up in the upper layers of the soil. Not too many down in the lower layers. You can see kind of where those white roots sticking out that I cut. And most of that's up with the upper edge. So now I take the burlap and I wrap it around it. I grab a little bit bigger piece of burlap than I need. But it's always better to have too big of a piece than too small of a piece. If you have too small of a piece, it's hard to cover the whole thing. But if you have too big of a piece, you can just wrap it around. Whatever extra burlap you have, I always like to wrap around the center of the trunk of the tree. The reason I like to do that is that when I take the twine and cut the twine and I tie onto the tree, that twine's tied on and it's rubbing up against burlap, not up against the trunk of the tree. It's not that big of a deal, but I I think that if you have a delicate tree like that's still growing, like a maple or uh, dogwood, and the bark's growing at, at that time, and you put the string onto it, you can sometimes damage the bark. So it's just a convention I like to use. So you assured that you don't damage the bark or the tree. I don't know how effective that it actually is or how much you need to do it, but that's what I like to do. The first piece of string goes right around the tree, just as so, underneath of it. And then I like to try to make it go through the center of the tree as possible. Sometimes it's really hard, but the better you, more on center you get, the better the tree ball is going to look. And this is basically the string that you use to pick up the tree. It doesn't really hold the ball too much in place, but it helps you move the tree around. And I do the second one around, making it go through perpendicular at the bottom. I loop the string through itself, and that holds the string in place so it doesn't move after that. Go back around, up to the trunk of the tree, and then we just tie it off. You can see that the base that it loops through, and that kind of anchors it. It doesn't really move after you do that simple little uh, tie off on the bottom. And you can just tie off on the top. You can try to make it as tight as possible, but it's as hard as you pull, it'll always go loose, mostly because the string kind of molds into the, the, the soil, so it doesn't really get real, real tight. So you cut off with extra, you tie it onto the other piece that you have, because you don't really want to waste too, too much. You take a little bit extra, and we're going to do the sides now. This one here is going to help hold the ball together the most. This is more of the structure one. And you can really get this, this next part tight. And what you do is you just pick some place on the side, and you tie it onto the side of the twine, or the other twine that you put around to help hold it to pick up the tree with. And you just go around the sides with it. And every time you go around, you meet a string, you loop it through. And that will help keep the string in the same spot. And you, there's four pieces of string you have to tie onto, so there's actually five times you have to go around. And after you get all the way around, you pull as quick, as tight as you can, and really tighten it down. You tie off a simple little knot, you cut off the extra, and then you have yourself a tree. And that's basically the kind of tree that you'd like to see. Every place you go has, does it a little bit different, but that's how I do it. Thank you. This video is brought to you by Highland Hill Farm. We grow and sell screening and buffering trees for privacy and sound barriers.